All right, this is the first video about uh, the topics on the final exam. And so in unit one, we started off with functions and from function and interval notation. And I feel like you're all good at that. And remember, a, a function means <laughs> each input goes to one output. For example, if I input two, it could only go to five, or it would not be a function if I inputted two and it could go to three or some, negative four, for example, that would not be a function. When I put in a value, it should just output one specific value. Uh, and then, so we talked about functions, and then we had, there's a big, um, we did a lot on domain and range. So this is something people may want to review. So finding domain, and we added to this all year, but, and you can expect this to be a big focus of the final exam because it was harder when people were using calculators and were at home and for me to do some uh, good domain range problems. But now that you'll all be on campus taking it, I, I do want to make sure that you have a good understanding of domain and range. And so some examples of problems from way back, something like this, finding the domain and range in a very systematic way. This is from 1.3c specifically. We had a lot of practice on this, or if you remember the, the K thing, as I used to call it, but now that we know how to graph rational functions, it makes more sense that this, in this particular function, the Y values never hit the value of three. So, or something like yet another example, which tend to be the more challenging for people is when, X is varying in a denominator and how to handle that. So it's worth 1.3 is kind of where we started with um, the domain and range. Uh, so that would be good to look at. And there were a bunch of sheets. I think I went all the way through 1.3D with domain and range. Um, so yeah, so we've talked, to, so what a function is, domain and range, and then composition of functions. And remember with the composition of functions, when you find the domain of that, it first has to pass through that inner function. So the domain of the inner function is important and the domain of the resulting function. So the domain of, specifically of the outer function doesn't come into play because that outer function gets manipulated by the inner function, but you really want to look at the domain of the inner function. And we had a quiz with that, and um, and that also was in unit one. I'm trying to see where specifically it was. It was around like 1.4, 1.5. Um, and then we got, so composition of functions, paying attention to the domain of those. Then we talked and defined inverses and when a function is invertible. And we recently reviewed this with trig, so it hopefully isn't too new, but a function is in, has an inverse and is invertible if every x value goes to a unique y value. So in other words, neither x values nor y values should repeat. Everything goes to someplace unique. Graphically, this would mean passing the horizontal line test, where when we talk about if something's a function, it means passing the vertical line test. And an inverse undoes the function. It, um, it specifically switches the domain and range. So if you found an inverse of a function, the domain and range should exactly flip. So we talked about finding uh, inverses of functions graphing inverses. Remember, inverses are symmetric across the line y equals x. So that's important there. Uh, and then another, th and then we talked to, so we did, and then we did some basic graphs of functions, which we found that, you know, by plotting some, and this was in 1.7, by plotting some points, I'm able to get a good look at um, kind of what the function's um, gonna look like, but even more important now that we have some domain and range knowledge is first finding the domain and range and then um, plotting some points to get the general look of a graph. So with graphing of functions, and this is before we really got into um, different types of functions like rational functions, polynomials, and all of that. 
but part of this first unit also was piecewise functions. And when remember when graphing piecewise functions always start with the restriction, even if that piece is not defined there, there'd be, you just would put an open circle at that restriction. So graphing piecewise functions is important. And then we started, then we jumped into the transformations of functions. So it's worth going back and doing some of those problems that we had, maybe on the redo the quiz related to that or the redo, um, look at your old tests, which um, should be on Canvas, either on Canvas or if you emailed it to me, it'll be in your, um, in your Google Drive folder there. And um, with transformations, remember transformations within the domain, we're talking about reverse order of operations, whereas range transformations, it's the order of operations. So there was a bunch of problems related to that. Like here's a graph, perform the given transformation. Here's a point, where does the point go given the transformation? Uh, what's the new domain and range given the transformation? So a lot of that type of stuff. And in particular, what was hard I think for people was transformations involving absolute value. So thinking about what's the transformation of this versus this or even something like x plus three, oops, that should be an absolute value, or um, f of x plus three. So thinking about that. Um, and we haven't done um, some of the specifics with transformations like this absolute value. We haven't repeated a ton this year. So again, that's worth going back and checking out those problems. And the last thing that we covered in this unit was even, odd, and neither. This recently came up on the trig test too. If a function is even, it means when I put in negative x values, that output is the same as when I put in the positive values associated with that, or the opposite and sign values. And to be, so this is even, and that's y-axis symmetry. And odd is when I put in negative x, well, that's the ne opposite sign y values if I put in the just x. So that symmetry is origin symmetry. So if I flip over both the y and the x-axis, the graph should line up. Um, and remember with uh, inverses, they're symmetric across y equal x, which makes sense because to find an inverse, you switch x and y, solve for the new y. So you should algebraically know how to find if something, a function's even or odd, and you should be able to look at a graph and tell me if it's even or odd. And that was chapter, the first unit. Okay, so topics from the first unit.